YouTubes, hello and welcome back. Welcome to this project. I have just temporarily tacked in the three 10k pots, the IF can and the aerial connection. They only just tacked in and done this by holding on to the component to the board um, whilst putting some solder on the iron which I did before and just touch it onto one of the pins just to hold it in place so we can move it around and position it and get these pots nice and straight um, and then solder the rest of them in more permanently also while um, I was uh, busy on eBay looking to see what um, nice goodies I could find I came across these diodes I liked them so I bought two packs so there's a hundred here these are 1N54013 amp diode and it's called a diode in back. I don't know if that's the make or whatever. I haven't really looked up these uh, specs but I was hoping maybe I might be able to use these uh, for the mains radios if I have to replace a rectifier tube with a diode or something. Um, I don't know whether these are going to be suitable or yet until I have a chance to have a look at the um, uh, the information um, check all the um, uh, the spec sheets on these um, but I think these might do the job um, we shall have to wait and see like I say I've got two packs of those and I thought uh, for the price more than reasonable more than reasonable Right, that's the last of the soldering of any components. They're all in. <clears throat> this is the phono jack. <laughs> Looks better, but look at the um, the nut that's on the end. Look how can you see that? How wonky that is. That's useless. But anyway, everything's in. All we've got to do now is is put the um, chips in. But this end of the board. This is what we're going to have to go back for the notes and see if we can work out what this is. We've got um, three holes here in a line. I'll try and zoom in a bit, maybe you might be able to see that better. Yeah, there we go. These three holes here, and this one here, and this one here. At the minute, we haven't got a clue what that is, so we have to go back to our sheets and see if it can give us any information see what happens find out all this first before we put the chips in and we could be ready for powering up pretty soon so like I say um, the rest is probably going to be hit and miss but we surely will get something out of it so the next stage will be powering this up and seeing what happens um, I don't have an antenna for it um, so we have to improvise. Um, if it works, we will rig up something better. If it doesn't work, we won't waste our time. We'll just um, attach wires to it and see what happens. But obviously, um, it needs to be an airplane nearby. I don't know what the range on this thing is going to be. If it works, if it does work... We will put it in some kind of a box of some kind to protect it and take it to um, Newcastle Airport and have a bit of fun with it. Hey, are we looking forward to that? And I'm making this up as we go along because how else are we going to um, um, find out if this thing actually works? Okay, I'll get back to you on the next part. Hello YouTubers, hello. The piece of video that you would have just seen was shot absolutely ages ago. I think it was shot on the same day that the other video was released. But of course we were wanting to uh, put the chips in and um, put a few more components in uh, and wire it up, that's all we have to do. So um, at the moment we're just left with the stage of putting in the um, ICs and, and basically putting an aerial on it and powering it up and see what happens. 
So to give you some idea of the scale of time, that's where we are now. It's the first, actually it's not the first, it's the second of the seventh today, not the first. The first was Sunday, today's Monday. So that date's wrong. But anyway, just to give you some idea of the scale of the thing. So what we're going to do today is um, stick these ICs in, um, put a, a PC amplifier speaker on, you know, the standard one you get with your um, PC, and then power this thing up. And what we want to listen for is some white noise, some snowy noise, however you want to de describe that. That's what we want to hear. Okay, that's U4 and 5 which is LM358 which is those two chips there both facing opposite ways but I have spotted something with one of the ICs I'll tell you about that when we get to it ok that one there we just put in there U6 which is LM386 Okay, the IC facing the cam with the blue screw top. That was the last chip we just put in, which was NE, sorry, start again, wrong, MC1350. But Houston, we have a problem. The next chip, which is the last one, I would have put in first, going in the order of the numbers. But I left it to last, because I wanted to make sure that all the other ICs was correct and followed the parts list. However, U2 does not. Now U2 is supposed to be, let me just find it on the camera, there we go, it's supposed to be an NE602. And what we've actually got is an NE612AN. Now it could be that they are the same, just a different manufacturer's number. So what I'm going to do is go on my phone and have a look and see what they are and check them out. Got nothing to lose. Okay, I found this. Any 12 receiver experiment and waveguide. Is that go oh, waveguide, that's it. Um, that was the date I have used both NE602 and NE612 interchangeable and not. The main part of the direct conversion receiver is a signal. So let's open it up and see what it says. Okay, according to all that text, um, we should be able to use it. It's fine, it's an equivalent. Right, okay, we're ready to try this. You can see I've got the positive linked up. That's my power supply, it's still working. <laughs> um, I've used my multimeter to check to make sure that I've got the voltage that I want, which is about 12 volts. I'll do a final check to make sure I've got the voltage correct before I actually touch anything. Also I use my multimeter to work out which of the center pin, so these wires here, these two wires that are here are gonna be used to power it. I hooked to the underneath of this, which is the um, power jack. So I have checked to make sure that um, um, the right wire is linked up to the right pin for positive and negative. But there is a protection diode in here at the back here that protects this whole thing if you do get the power in the wrong way around, which is quite nice. I like that a lot. Um, we have a, a PC speaker down there which is um, powered up, ready to go, turn on the full volume. We're not really expected to pick up any aeroplanes or any um, activity. All we want is to see if we can hear any white noise static sound. Okay, so here we go. I know Steve has been um, dying to see this. So let's have a just want to go over a few notes to make sure I've got everything right and then I'll get back to you and you see the power up. Yep, confirm power supply is 12 volts. Now there's no antenna on this. If we do get um, static noise I'll put a piece of wire on. 
So here we go. Ready, steady, go. Oh. We have static. Well, we have static noise, which is a good sign. Right, let's put a uh, long length of wire on and make an antenna. That's the next thing I'm going to do. Right, play around with this a little bit. Um, I've managed to get a sound out of it, but by the sounds of it, it's the sound of my isolation transformer. So what we really need is a battery. So I'm going to have to go and find a battery from somewhere. So I don't know what I've got, but we'll have a look. And that way we'll have a clean power source. So just to show you what I've got, I'll just link this up, you can hear the noise. Can you hear that? So like I say, I think we need a battery on this. volume. Let's squelch. Yeah, it's looking like it's working actually. Yep, just did a bit of tweaking, but so far so good, it's looking promising, very promising. And that's how I've linked it up on the back. So I'm going to do a separate video on when we finally find something, going to have to sort out a better aerial, get things a bit more um, isolated than they are. And I suppose the next point is to go for a trip to um, the nearest airport, which for me is Newcastle Airport. Unfortunately, that's going to have to wait. Now, the reason why you've waited so long for this next bit, which is only taken a short little while to show you, is the Sunday after when I said I recorded the previous bits of video, and uh, the beginning parts, which you'll know when you get to watch it. Um, I've had cat problems. Um, Sophie is dying to be mated with a Tom, which is probably lurking around the outside of my bungalow. I wouldn't be at all surprised if I've got a queue of cats out there spraying all over the place trying to get to her. And of course, when she smells that, she lets out this um, cat mating call which could be at any time of the day or night, usually late evening to night time, and she's been waking us up. One morning she had us up at half past one in the morning. I could have throttled her. She's been driving me nuts, absolutely round the bend. So the only way to solve this problem is to get them spayed, and they're booked into the vets tomorrow morning. Um, their last meal will be somewhere between 9 and 10 tonight um, I've got two separate uh, cat boxes for them so Sophie and Poppy will be going to the vets to get spayed and then I'll be looking after them and helping them with their recovery when they get back so until I know where I am with both of them my little darling little girls um, we're kind of going to be a bit halted but at least we've got some kind of static noise 
coming through the speaker, which is what we wanted to hear. That proves this circuit is working. It's just not receiving anything, probably because the aerial is not um, good enough or we're not near uh, where they're transmitting and receiving. We need, you know, we need to be near somewhere else, you think. Um, so that we know where we are, we can then tune it in. Because you've got two um, places to tune in on this. And it says that you need to be in an area where you're surrounded by lots of traffic where you can tune it in. Uh, one, which is the IF can, the blue, the blue center, that's for getting the um, radio into the range that we can tune in. And the other one, I think, is for sensitivity. But we'll know more about that next time. So, further ado, we'll um, call this quits and um, more to come later. Also, uh, here we go again, another add-on part. I keep doing this. Please go along and see Steve UK's videos on his build of the ship, which is from laser cut parts uh, to build the Black Pearl. He's doing a really, really good job, and I think it's definitely worth a watch if you're interested in models. Please go along and um, have a look. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.